In Creo Parametric, you can use data sharing features like copy geometry features as part of top-down design. A copy geometry feature allows you to reference the geometry from a source model into a target model. In this video, we are going to take a look at some of the updates to the copy geometry feature from Creo Parametric 7.0 and later. So here I am in an assembly model. Right now you are seeing the geometry of a skeleton. Let me open up the skeleton in its own separate window. I can get to the open icon from a left mouse click in the mini toolbar. And so in this particular model, I have solid geometry. If I expand the design items folder, which was an addition in Creo 8, we have the bodies folder located in there. Bodies are containers of solid geometry. And so a lot of times in Creo 6 and earlier, I recommended, hey, you're best off modeling with surfaces inside of a skeleton. But with the addition of multi-body functionality in Creo 7, it is a great idea to model using solid geometry inside of skeletons it's a great way of organizing your model plus with the body functionality you have the control over whether new solids are merged with the existing solids so again in this model i have a number of different bodies also let me hide the bodies for a moment i can get to that from the mini toolbar i also have a curve created from a cross section I also have a datum plane in the model here. Let me make the bodies visible once more. And let's see if I go to the properties tab. You can see I have a couple of 3D annotations in here that I might want to leverage inside of a copy geometry feature. And also, if you take a look in the footer of the model tree, we have three different published geometry features. I like to name my published geometry features with the letters PG so people know what they are. So now that we see what we have in the skeleton model, let's hop back over to the assembly. And I want to start showing you some of the differences to the copy geometry feature. First off, let's go to the structure subassembly. I don't have a skeleton model. Let me create a skeleton model in here. First, I will left click on the node in the model tree and use the activate icon from the mini toolbar. That way, when I click on the create command, any components I create will be located in that subassembly. Let me adjust the name, strip the numbers off of the end. Then I will click the OK button. Here it's listing my default template. I like that. Let's click the OK button again. And now we have the structural skeleton created. Let me turn off my datum plane display for a moment. And now I will activate the skeleton model so that any new geometry I create or any features I create will be located in the skeleton. Now I will click on the copy geometry command and one update since the original copy geometry videos that I made, you'll notice that the dashboard looks different. Back around Creo 6, they added more text to the icon so that people don't have to memorize the icons or hover the mouse over an icon in order to tell what the button does. Also, a new addition, the references tab is automatically open by default. So the most commonly used tab will automatically be opened. You'll also notice that the location of the tabs have been moved so that they do not overlap with the model tree. So first off, let's take a look at adding a published geometry feature in here. I will click on Publish Geometry. And so now I can hover my mouse over the model. There we see one published geometry feature. Okay, here is another one. I can left click on it. And then if I go to the Properties tab, hey, I can rename this. So it tells me what this copy geometry feature does. Now I will hit the check mark. And if I expand the skeleton 
in the model tree. There you can see the copy geometry feature that I created. I'm going to hide it real quickly just so that it doesn't interfere with any future selection. So there you see how the interface has changed a bit from previous versions of the software. Now I will take a look at some of the changes to selection methods for some of the different references. And I'll go to a, another skeleton model. And right now I don't have one in the subassembly. Let's create one real quick. I will activate it and then hit the create button and then OK, OK. Now I've got my skeleton model. Let's activate it. And to create my new copy geometry feature, I will click on the command in the ribbon. And first, let's say I want to get all the different solid surfaces from the skeleton model. There are a couple of ways of doing that. One way is by using the details button, which opens up the surface sets dialog box. From here, initially, you can select individual surfaces using left mouse clicks. If you click on the add button, you can define a set. I can start off by selecting an anchor surface. And one of the options in here is surfaces of all bodies. So I can left click on that. It'll grab all the surfaces, all the solid surfaces from the skeleton model. Let's click the OK button. And for the sake of the rest of the demonstration, I am not going to rename my copy geometry features. Let's hit the check mark. And so now I have the copy geometry feature in the armor skeleton. Let me hide it real quick. And next up, let's take a look at another method. Let's go to another subassembly. This one already has a skeleton. Let's activate it and create a, another copy geometry feature. Similarly, if I wanted to grab all the surfaces from all the bodies in the skeleton model, well, you can left click on a seed surface. And then if you hold down the right mouse button, from the pop-up menu, you have a choice at the top to grab the surfaces of all bodies. So I will click on that. Alternatively, there is a choice underneath there just to grab the surfaces of the selected body. Let's hit the check mark once more. And we have the copy geometry feature created inside there. Let me hide the skeleton at that level. Now let's take a look at some of the new functionality in the copy geometry feature that was added since Creo 7.0. Let me go to a different skeleton, activate it, and create a copy geometry feature. Probably one of the biggest changes is the addition of the bodies collector to support multi-body modeling. So for example, for bodies, I can select the bodies either out of the design items folder in the model tree. Alternatively, you can select the bodies on the screen. So for example, I would want this body for propulsion. Let me rotate around and grab another body from the back of the skeleton. That's good. So now I can hit the check mark and I have my copy geometry feature in the propulsion skeleton. Let me go back to it for a moment. I will choose edit definition. One other thing to mention about copying bodies, if you go to the options tab, here we have it docked into the screen. I can actually grab this and move this tab off of the model. If I click on references, now I can have the references tab open at the same time. So this ability to have multiple tabs open, this is a user interface enhancement that was added in Creo 8. And Creo will now remember which tabs were opened and undocked and moved to different locations. This will automatically be saved in your Creo parametric customization.ui file so that the next time that you launch Creo Parametric or create these features, it'll remember where you place them around here. But I want to show you that we have a bunch of options checked underneath include properties. So for example, you have appearance and parameters. So the appearance and parameters of any copied entities in the copy geometry feature will retain their appearance and parameters 
from their source geometry. Also, we have names in here. If you have renamed the entities, it will remember the names. If not, it will just give a generic name to the entity in the target model. Then we have layers. So if you have a layer of the same name in the target part as in the source model and the entity has an assignment to that layer, it will remember that layer assignment in the target model. And the last two options here pertain to bodies. So you can have bodies with different materials. If you assign a material to a body and you have this option checked, then the body in the target model will have the same material assignment. Also, we have this construction yes, no option. And so what that means is that if you are copying a body that was set as a construction entity in the source model, if you have this box checked, it will be a construction body in the target model. If this box is unchecked, then the copied body will be a regular standard body. It won't be a construction body in the target model. So any mass will contribute to the mass properties and also it will be considered for interference checks, clearance checks, all those other different things. So these are the other additional options to be aware of for the copy geometry feature enhancements since Creo 6.0. All right, let's hit the check mark to complete that feature and deselect everything. For the next step, let me go back to the first skeleton I was working on. Here I have the structure skeleton. I'm going to create another copy geometry feature inside of that one. So let's click on copy geometry. And for this one, you'll notice that the options tab opened up in its previous location. You can close it if you want. But let's grab some different chains in here. So one method that you have is to grab all the curves from a feature. And at the beginning, I showed how I have a curve using the cross section. So if I go to the details button, here we have standard where I can pick the different curve entities one by one if I want to. But if I go to rule based, then we can click the radio button for all the curves in the feature. And that way, if I just grab one of the curves in here, let me zoom in to make sure that I'm getting one of those cross section curves, you'll notice that it is grabbing all of the different curves in there. So that's good. Let's click the OK button. So now I've got all the curves in the feature chain. And for something else I want to show in a moment, I'm going to grab some other additional edges. So let me hold down the control key and grab this edge and this edge. And let's see, where's the other one that I want to get? Here I want to grab, pardon me for a moment while I make sure that I'm getting what I want to use. There we go. Just want to make sure I get some different edges that support an annotation that I want to copy. So now that I have all the edges that I want in the model, let's go to the references group. From here, this is where you can grab additional entities like datum planes or axes or points or coordinate systems. I am going to use this to select the datum plane called ground and now I can go to the annotations button here and choose edit. And so this is where you can grab those 3D annotations from a source model. So for example, I can grab this one, hold down the control key and grab this other one over there and click the OK button. And so that way I have two annotations from the skeleton model being used in my source model. All right, a couple other things just to Recap for the copy geometry feature. Just like before, you have the same surface copying options. So right now it is copying all surfaces as is. You also have the radio button to exclude certain surfaces and fill holes or copy inside of a curve boundary. And if you use this option, you would be selecting a boundary curve for the 
definition of what portion of the surface that you want to keep. Also, just like before, as in Creo 6 and earlier, you have the copy geometry update. So by default, it is set to automatic update. So if you ever make changes to the source model and you have both the source model and, and target model in session at the same time and regenerate, well, it will automatically update the copy geometry feature. You have the manual update so that the feature will only update when you specify using the manual update button in the dashboard, here's the option to provide a notification for the update. And you also have the no dependency. I'm going to cancel out of there. Normally, that is a one-way trip. Again, there is a hidden config.pro option that you can set so that you can make this a return trip if you want to ptc recommends against using it but be aware that it does exist all right let's go back to manual update here is the refit datums button so if you copy any datums like i did with this datum plane called ground down at the bottom and your target model is smaller than the source model then the size of the datum features their outline will automatically update to the size of the target model and as always like i showed earlier you do have the properties tab which is a place where you can change the name of the feature let me call this i always like to call it referencing the source model let me hit the check mark and so now i have created my different copy geometry features let's open up the skeleton in its own separate window so you can see that i have the datum plane ground that is copied it looks like these annotations are using a different unit system than we have in the source model you can see the curves that were copied over using that option for all curves in feature let me hide this skeleton and then bring back this other one make that one visible as well so there you can see the reference geometry i now have in my target part that i can leverage for creating new geometry in the target part so that's how you can use the copy geometry feature in creo 7 and creo 8. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.